Hey, what's up everybody? 3D Theory here. So as you may or may not have heard, the Starkiller helmet, I had to stop it because the bed was wobbling like this. So what I'm gonna do in this video is at first I'm gonna take this off. I'm gonna get it leveled so that the knobs don't get loose during printing. And Creality Official actually told me a specific way of doing that. So I'm gonna be doing that in this video. And then I'm gonna go into the 3D model. I'm gonna slice it. Well, I should probably say cut it and then take it into Creality Slicer and slice it and continue the print and have it finished off. I'm gonna probably weld it with a soldering iron later on. But my whole goal with this Starkiller helmet, one of them, was to print on the CR-10S5 in one go. And that didn't happen because the bed came loose. Hey, by the way, if you're new here to the 3D Theory channel, we're all about 3D printers and 3D printing fun props. If you're interested in these topics, then consider subscribing and click that notification bell to get notified when I upload new videos. But nonetheless, let's get started. And I'm gonna take this helmet off the print bed. And this is the benefits of having a PEI sheet right here, where you can pretty much just take it off by bending this this sheet right here. So if all goes well, this should just simply come off. And wow, that was actually so nice. That came off so easily. This is where we're at with the Starkiller helmet and we just gotta do the rest of the dome. And it was so close. So we're probably around 60% and it just had to do this thing, but it's okay. We're gonna fix it and we're gonna continue it and get it going from there. So I'm just gonna line this back up how it needs to be. And I'm gonna stick these back on here. And putting these clips on prevents it from moving around and you wouldn't think it moves around, but it really does. Okay, I'm just gonna clean this off. And I'm gonna give it a quick little wipe down just to make sure that everything's come off from there. Looks good. All right, so essentially what we wanna do, because these knobs got loose and there are four of them on each corner of the bed, according to Creality Official Support, when your bed gets loose during printing, they say tighten it all the way, and that goes for all four knobs. That's as tight as it's gonna get. Now let's move on to the other one. And as you can tell with this one, this one is really loose. So I'm gonna hold that metal part just at the bottom there and turn it as best I can. My hands barely fit down here, but I'm actually gonna, so I'm gonna hold it again with my finger and then just rotate. So this thing actually has some rotating power. It looks like I was rotating the wrong way, okay. I'm just continuing to rotate here. Sorry, my fingers are in the way, but all I'm doing is I'm rotating the screw so that it is tight and basically I've screwed it down all the way. I'm actually gonna bring this bed all the way back to the wall. There you go. This is one of the reasons why I moved the tables. Okay, that's as tight as that can go. And so I'm just gonna do the same thing to the uh, knobs on the other side. So there's one right across the way there and also there's one right across the other side over there. So I'm just gonna tighten those as well and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, so now I got those knobs tightened up all the way and the bed isn't moving at all because I've tightened all four of those knobs, the front two and the back two. And what Creality official support says to do if you're having a bed wobbling issue during printing where the bed becomes loose is they say after tightening all four, go ahead and loosen each one of those four knobs three to five turns. I like to do three turns, it just gives me some wiggle room. So I'm gonna show you what that's like here. All right, so I'm just gonna loosen this knob three to five turns, actually just three turns. So I go, let's actually try to use some sort of measuring. So I'm gonna put my thumb right here, coming right at the side. So one, two, three. So that's three turns. I'm actually gonna go one more, four. So that's four turns to loosen it up. Now I'm gonna do the same exact thing with the knob down over here. All right, so the same deal. I'm just gonna reach here and turn it. One, two, three, and four. So that's four turns. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side and I'll see you when I finish with that. All right, now I'm just gonna turn on the CR-10 S5. All right, from here, I'm just gonna click Auto Home. And now it's in the Auto Homing sequence. All right, now that auto homed, so we're gonna move on to the next step. All right, now that we're here, we're gonna wanna move the nozzle to zero, which is right where the nozzle touches the bed surface. And like I said before, since I'm using a PEI sheet, I got just a little extra thickness to my bed. So I got the metal part, which is this one here, which has the mechanism that warms the bed up underneath it. I got the glass part, which is this part here. And then I have two pieces here. I have the metal PEI sheet and the part beneath it right there 
is the um, magnetic sticker that you have to put on so the PI sheet magnetically sticks on to that magnetic sheet there. So because of that thickness, I have to make sure that that nozzle there zeroes out properly. So we're gonna go over to the power box and just click on prepare. Then we're gonna go over to move axis, then move Z. And we wanted to move it in the increments of 0 0.0 or 0 0.1. So as you can see, it's at 12.1, but the nozzle has a lot of clearance right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the knob and as I turn the knob, it'll start lowering. And it's lowering at a really small rate, but I'm going, I'm going, and I wanna make sure I touch it. And I'm actually gonna use a sheet of paper to make sure I touched it because it's really hard to tell just from looking at it. So it looks like it's already touched the, the bed. So I'm gonna raise it up just a little bit. And just so I'm there, I'm gonna keep shaking it and I'm turning the knob as I'm shaking it lower and lower, one increment at a time. And now it's kind of got it pinched in there. So I know that it's under there, I'm gonna try it again. Okay, it's pinched, just one increment and it started pinching. So now that I know that it's pinched, I'm gonna try to aim for that same feeling with all four corners of the bed. And as you can see here, my new zero is actually 0.9. All right, so now I wanna go back and I just wanna check if my Z offset is where it needs to be. And how do I know where it needs to be? I need to go to my Z offset here. So on the Creality YouTube channel that I have linked below, the number that they have on screen is negative 2.199. So just to make sure that I'm doing exactly as they recommend, I have mine also set to negative 2.199. And since I'm not touching that, I know that my nozzle is sitting right on top of the bed. By the way, what Z offset does is it just raises and lowers the nozzle just like you could with the previous method I was using just a second ago, except the Z offset you can adjust while it's printing, which will give you the ability to tweak the distance between your nozzle and your bed as you print, which is really helpful. So now that I know that it's at negative 2.199, I'm good. This is exactly what they recommend. So next I'm gonna do the following step, which is go to control, and you're just gonna scroll down to store settings. So now the settings are stored, and now I wanna disable the stepper motors, which will allow me to move the nozzle anywhere I want on the bed, which in this case, we're gonna use it so we can level the four corners of the bed. To disable the stepper motors, we're gonna go over to repair, and down at the bottom, we're gonna click disable stepper motors. So now the stepper motors are disabled, and I could move this head any which way I want. And also I can move the bed forward and backward as needed. So we're gonna start out with the left-hand corner here. We're just gonna bring the stepper motor over here and we're gonna bring this forward. And we're going to, again, stick the sheet on the bottom, the sheet of paper that I have and adjust the knob so that we get that same pressure we had in the center. All right. So now I'm gonna stick the sheet on the bottom here. All right, so I can't quite get the sheet underneath there. I'm gonna start twisting the knob so that there's separation between the nozzle and the bed. All right, so I was able to get the paper underneath the nozzle there by twisting the knob and it feels a little tight. So I'm gonna give it a couple more turns so that it can be a little looser. Still a little tight. All right, that's pretty good actually. I'm gonna loosen it just a little bit so it gets tighter again. All right, that's pretty good. I'm feeling some tension there and I feel really good about that. Now, if I try to stick it in, again, I can't. That's because I have it right at the bed. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing for the back here. So as you can see here, I can just slide the paper underneath with no issue in this one. And this one actually required no turning and it was already this high. So you can see how the bed leveling is completely crucial to what we're doing here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to loosen the knob so that the bed goes higher. Okay, I need to do it some more. And what I'm doing is I'm twisting that knob on the bottom and I'm testing and I'm loosening. I'm testing and I'm loosening. Okay, I'm feeling a little bit of tension so just a little more should do it. Oh yeah, that's plenty. So I'm tightening it again, just so it gives me a little bit more looseness. That's where we want to have it. It's, I can tell it's grinding up against that sheet and I can't get it back in there. So that's perfect. Next, we're going to go ahead and do the front. 
Now we're gonna go ahead and do the other one. All right, same with this one. I can just freely just slide that sheet of paper underneath without having touched the knobs, which means that it's too high. So I'm gonna start adjusting the knob here. I'm gonna start loosening it. Shake it just to see if there's any tension. Not yet. It's getting closer. All right, now we're getting some tension there. I'm gonna loosen a little bit more. Okay, that's too tight. All right, I'm quite happy with that. There's a nice amount of tension there. And lastly, we're gonna go ahead and do the back corner here. Okay, this is just the same concept as the last three. This is too tight. So this one somehow is really tight. So I'm gonna go ahead and start tightening the knob even more to give me some space between the bed and the nozzle. All right, now I got some space between the bed and the nozzle there after tightening it. It's almost fully tightened to get that much space there. So I'm gonna start loosening the knob now. All right, I feel that tension, it's a little strong, so I'm gonna adjust it as needed. All right, so I'm feeling that same amount of tension, which is good. I, I could hardly get the sheet back underneath there. So we're ready to go. And just to let you guys know, a little turn of the knob goes a long way. So it's really sensitive. All right, so now we're just gonna go ahead and do an automatic bed leveling. So we're just gonna go to prepare bed leveling, and the sequence is starting. I don't know about all CR-10S5s, but I know mine came with BL Touch, and you can see it down here. You got a little, you know, pin that comes out right there. It touches the bed, and it does it 25 times all over the bed. I'm not sure if all CR-10S5s came with that BL Touch, but I know that this is an, a newer model of the CR-10S5, so it did come with the BL Touch, and I think it was a really nice touch. No, <laughs> no pun intended. And I really think it was a good upgrade to the printer. All right, that finished doing its automatic bed leveling. And now I want to grab my 70 millimeter lens, throw it on this camera and take a picture of the Starkiller helmet so I know exactly where to cut in Maya. All right, so it's actually not a 70 millimeter lens, it's a 75 to 300 millimeter lens. And I'm going to be using this for the reason that I can zoom out real far up to 300 millimeters. And that's going to allow me to get as close to an orthographic picture as I can get with the equipment that I have. And that's important because I want the Starkiller helmet to appear as flat as possible when I go ahead and use that image to cut the model up in Maya. All right, so I got the zoom lens at 300 millimeters and I'm pretty far away from the Starkiller helmet here. But what I did is I tried to get as straight on of an image as I possibly can and tried to raise the camera up so that I'm closest to this edge so there is no perspective warp. So this is the image I'm going to be taking. All right, guys, so now we're in Maya. And what I did is I just lined up that picture with the 3D model and the lineup is looking really good. So all I'm gonna do from this point on is just slice it where the print got cut off. Okay, I'm actually gonna go to my multi-cut tool settings here and then I'm gonna click extract faces and it's gonna be at a distance of five units. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna find a spot where I think it would be best to cut it and I'm just gonna hold shift and drag across. There you go, it cut it. All right, I'm quite happy with that cut there. I'm gonna go in my perspective mode. And as you can see, this is where it was cut. I'm just gonna grab the rest of the helmet and delete it. All right, all we gotta do now is patch up this hole here. And to do that, all right, now that we got it cut out, I just gotta fill this hole. And it's gonna take a little bit of work. So I'm gonna show you a sample of what I'm gonna be doing. So I'm just gonna go into edge mode, select one edge, select another edge. I'm gonna bridge those so that it closes up. And likewise, I'll do the same thing to another edge down the line here. I'm just gonna click bridge. After that's bridged, I'm just gonna select this entire thing and click fill hole. And now that that's filled, I'm gonna select this as a face and I'm just gonna go to mesh, triangulate. All right, and that did the trick. It filled the hole and it created a triangulated mesh there. And pretty much I'm gonna do the same thing for the rest of the holes here. And I'll see you when that is finished. All right, so we got those holes patched up and triangulated. And we're just gonna go into Creality Slicer now to just get this sliced out and ready to continue 3D printing. All right, so now that we're in Creality Slicer, it's showing all this area where it wants to generate supports. I know with domes, they naturally support themselves. So I'm gonna put some support blockers in here and then get it sliced out. And to put support blockers in, you just select the geo, go over this button here and click there and you got a support blocker. Then you want to just go into your transformation controls here. In this case, I'm going to select it and scale it up. And let's go ahead and move it over. And continue scaling here. And I want that kind of centered out. So to get that centered out, I'm just going to click zero on the x-axis. All right, I'm going to continue to scale this out. Uh, but at a certain point, I don't want to scale uniformly. So at this point, I'm not going to scale uniformly. I feel like I could scale it 
sideways and the X some more. And I think that is exactly where I want it to be. That's actually perfect. There are some areas where I still want the supports to generate, like right here. So I'm going to raise it up a little bit. All right, so I know that those supports will get generated there. Okay, and my slicer settings are really simple. I just leave everything as is. I do generate supports. I do a support density of 5%, and I generate a raft, and I'm just gonna click slice there. All right, this is gonna take two days, six hours and four minutes. That's ready to go. I'm gonna get that onto an SD card, and I'll see you at the CR10S5 to start the print. All right, guys, so we got the SD card in the S5. So we're just gonna go ahead and start printing. As you could tell, I have it set to 50 degrees for the bed, and uh, it's, I think, at 200 degrees for the nozzle, but it's going to reach 50 first, and then it'll go over to 200. All right, guys, I got the SD card in there, and I just started the print, so it's going to reach at uh, 50 degrees. That's the bed. I like it at 50 degrees as opposed to 45, and I think the nozzle is at 200, so once the bed gets to 50 degrees, this is going to switch to 200 and increase the, the heat there, and then it's going to start the print. All right, guys, so I'm happy to say the print is starting. I'm really Really excited I really hope this is gonna just mark it as finished this is the last part of the star killer helmet and hopefully it'll just continue on just fine and I'll be updating you in the coming days as how the print is going so it's gonna print the raft out which takes a pretty pretty long time if you're doing a big uh, print like this and once that raft is finished out it's gonna start printing out the rest of the helmet and so I'm really excited to get this thing finished and ready to go by the way if you want to watch more videos about 3d printing fun props and 3d printing then check out the playlist that pops up on the screen. Alright guys, until next time, peace, love, and joy.